Very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I take the pleasure to invite uh, all the participants for the twenty seventh uh, webinar of All India Drugs Control Officers Confederation Training Academy. We are pleased to have with us today Dr. Pradeep Kumar Mathu, a former Joint Commissioner from the FDA Punjab, and Shri K. Rajabhanu, Secretary General of uh, All India Drugs Control Officers Confederation. And we are also pleased to have uh, uh, Dr. Bangaru Rajan sir, uh, Joint Drugs Controller from CDSCO, on this platform. and i take this pleasure to invite all the guests and uh, uh, the officers of the all india drugs control officers confederation as well as the cdscbo the central council members and our fellow regulators and also we are joined by the industry and academia participants a warm welcome you all for this today's webinar and i believe everyone's life and starts and ends with the i mean the day starts and ends with the use of personal care products or cosmetics product and this the size of the market has grown exponentially in the world wide to around 210 billion dollars and it's keep on increasing every year on year and there is a lot of uh, uh, emphasis has been given by the global regulators and even the indian regulators on the safety of the these cosmetics or personal care products so having used all of this so as a consumer just forget about as a regulator as a consumer are we well aware are we well concerned about the safety of these these cosmetics of course we have at the back of our mind that there are regulators who take care of all these factors but as a consumer we also need to keep a focus on these factors and today we have dr pradeep kumar mattu ji who is better i mean better than anyone who could share the the experience that he has uh, as a regulator for the safety of this cosmetic on the other side on the other side as a co consumer for these products so we are so so pleased to have you with us today sir on this program and now i would like to invite uh, our secretary general dr uh, k rajabhanu sir for the opening remarks thank you lakshmi for the uh, brief introduction uh, and I, i once again welcome uh, uh, dr pradeep kumar mattu Uh, today is uh, the eminent speaker on the topic which was given uh, and bangar rajan from cdsco sir and other all our ec members of all india drugs control officers confederation and central council members and various members who have joined for this uh, webinar uh, from both from uh, industry as well as uh, academy uh, uh, thank you so much lakshmi for the that uh, choosing a uh, very uh, topic of uh, present scenarios and all other than the drugs as we all know that i think as a regulator sir i think uh, everyone uh, who have uh, enforcing the drugs and cosmetics act and all rules and all more than 90% of our time and energy goes in handling the drugs only uh, but uh, i think uh, maybe we have uh, uh, spared much of our time uh, with respect to the cosmetics and all maybe the government of india has also thought of it in a in a befitting manner bring it brought about cosmetics rules uh, 2020 uh, though the definition of the cosmetics uh, in the section 3 triple a has not been changed it has been the same i think maybe as old as we when we were learning our pharmacy in the pharmacy itself that any article which is intended to be rubbed poured sprinkled here introduced or whatever it may be it was into the human body applied or so and so and so to make for cleansing beautifying uh, improving uh, uh, promoting attractiveness all these things appearance and all these have been introduced into the uh, the definition of that one and while while making the definition so elaborate and all those things and any article which is coming into uh, the contact of the human skin or whatever it may be the body parts and all uh, for such and such purposes uh, definitely they should have to have a standards which are laid down under section 16 uh, sub class 1 and b and then of course the, all the safety parameters and all they have been reintroduced into our uh, uh, cosmetics rules 2020 with respect to safety while the definitions with respect to the misbranded cosmetics and spurious cosmetics remain the same but i think in 2000 uh, 8 2008 when uh, the introduction introduction of uh, the adulterated cosmetics have been brought in into the chapters of the drugs and cosmetics act and definitely in in that part of it it has contains any harmful or it has mentioned very clearly that if it contains any harmful or toxic substance uh, which may render injurious to health 
I think that that is going to be the key word with respect to your adulterated cosmetics, and it has also been it has been mentioned elsewhere also, uh, wherever the safety aspects of the cosmetics has come into picture. I think uh, uh, I don't go much elaborate on these aspects and all because uh, our eminent speaker uh, Pradeep ji will be uh, will be talking more on that, and definitely Lakshmi will be introducing him to the August gathering. And of course, uh, there are, we have around, uh, as we said, that uh, around 80 kinds of varieties of products are have been introduced into our cosmetics rules, right from your head to toe, uh, all those which covers, all those things and all. And uh, the standards of that are, are, are in the Bureau of Indian Standards, are around 36 or 37 varieties are also there. The colors and all of those things. I think every part of it has been comprehensively dealt in the cosmetics rules. I think vis-a-vis -vis that, I think probably our speaker will be will be bringing about all those things and more about of the safety aspect of it, and which will which will which will make us appreciate that. Uh, uh, that what we have been spending so much time on uh, drugs, spurious drugs, adulterated drugs, and so on and so forth. I think equally we have to uh, uh, spare our time with respect to what are the cosmetics that are being imported. I think Bangar Rajan is here. We will be also trying to add a, a points here, there about the uh, import of the cosmetics registration part of it, if it, if it requires a, a couple of points on that. And the kind of cosmetics which are moving in the market, I think probably. We, I think as we all, as a consumers, uh, as we know that Lakshmi has said that every day in, day out, we'll be buying so much of cosmetic, kind of cosmetic products, uh, right from toothpaste to the, uh, the we, we close, the, close the day with your mouthwash or whatever it may be, all those things and all. And, uh, and we, are, we are oblivious to the fact that uh, some of those cosmetics which are being used in the hotels, your, uh, uh, your uh, hair saloons and that, these and all, whether they are coming into the ambit of all these things that we are really monitoring them or not and what the contents they are, what are they are being labeled with uh, and whether the ingredients are there, whether they are safe and uh, efficacious or not. All these things, I think definitely it will make us, I think this, this, uh, the, the content of the speaker will definitely make us appreciate about all those things. And I think selecting uh, Pradeep ji for this one, as, as this, we started with this young, youngster, uh, young retired officer, <laughs> the joint commissioner of FDA Punjab, and I think the Miss Universe 2021 is coming from Punjab, is it so? Yeah. Annas yeah. Kaur Sandhu? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So I think maybe it is so apt in that way. So I think with these few words uh, opening and all, I, I request uh, Lakshmi to introduce uh, our uh, the speaker, uh, eminent speaker Kumar uh, Pradeep ji to the August gathering. And I think then that will be uh, a way for uh, the topic and, 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 and so on. Please. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for uh, put forwarding the brief outline of the provisions uh, well defined in the recent cosmetic rules and uh, uh, the various provisions that were very much useful for the usage of these products and all. So now with that, I take the pleasure of inviting and welcoming Dr. Pradeep Kumar Mantuji. And I, I'm sure all the, the most of the regulators and almost every regulator is uh, uh, is in close contact with Dr. Pradeep ji. But for the benefit of the those participants joining from industry and academy, I just take a minute to introduce uh, a formal introduction of Dr. Pradeep ji. So Dr. Pradeep Kumar Mantuji, he has uh, joined the uh, FDA Punjab and he worked for several decades in the department and he has retired as a joint commissioner of FDA and he holds the uh, doctorate degree in biotechnology and uh, he has a lot of enthusiasm in the education sector and the learning and he has done his MBA from the marketing and also he holds the LLM degree in the crime and uh, criminology besides the pharma degree and all. So he has almost holds, up, uh, uh, if I'm not wrong, around the three decades of experience as a regulator and um, he has made his close contribution for the development of the uh, strengthening of the food and drug inspectors and the regulatory system and the testing mechanism, especially in the state of the Punjab and improvement. And now his keen focus is on the welfare of the consumers for uh, all these products, whether it is a drugs or personal care products or cosmetics. And we are so uh, keen to hear your uh, uh, observations and the improvement areas that a, as a regulator or as a consumer one should focus on. So with that kind of introduction, may I invite you for your presentation, sir? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Respected Dr. Bangaru Rajanji, uh, former Joint Drug Controller, CDSEO. Raja Bhanuji from Andhra Pradesh. 
and ma'am Lakshmi, I think uh, most of the uh, participants must be known to you, ma'am, because you are very much regular in contact with uh, all the participants. So the august presence of uh, our participants. Very good morning to all, Sasika and Ada. Am I audible to all? Uh, so, ma'am, kindly share the screen of, uh, with me, my presentation on the screen. Sure. So, uh, all the participants uh, very well know that uh, Drug and Cosmetic Act is one, and uh, it is applicable to all the states because it is a central act. So, Government of India is an advisory body to all the states, and state is, in fact, responsible for implementation of the provisions of drugs and cosmetics act. So, as Raja Bhanuji uh, very well said, the uh, framework of our cosmetics rules, that they are very latest. So, the government of India has framed the cosmetic solution to and, uh, these are very exhaustive rules and uh, I think there is uh, hardly any deficiency in that. But uh, see, there is always improvement, a scope of improvement in all the fields. So, I will uh, like to focus uh, on some guidelines which are required to be uh, developed for the strengthening of the uh, present current rules 2020. So as a consumer, I have learned a lot of experience uh, by, uh, by using the products uh, available in the market. So there are a lot of, lot of type of products which has a very heavy and very high claims on the labels. And uh, of course, uh, some of the uh, claims are not see, appears to be uh, so much correct. So we will like to discuss also, uh, those also. So as uh, Raja Bhanuji said, the safety uh, measures, the directions for adequate uh, safety measures and uh, such directions must be born on the label. It is very much there under the labeling manner, the drugs and cosmetics rule. Was So uh, let us have a look on the overview. So cosmetics are being regulated in each and every state uh, under the provisions of drug and cosmetics rules, that is cosmetics rules to zero, which are very, very much latest and very much exhausted. So as you all know, there is a no significant systemic absorption of the cosmetics because they are meant for local application. So products are intended to be applied on dermis, right? However, there are some claims that uh, uh, the products, the formulations are being penetrated into the dermis, right? And exert just effects from the uh, a little bit systemic effects also, right? So, which may uh, some uh, products which are claimed with the uh, uh, manufactured with the uh, by adopting the high technologies, right? They are claiming that they, their products performances have a utmost uh, usage for the correction of some uh, deformed, does uh, not say deformed, this abnormalities of the skin and irregularities on the skin. However, uh, till date, no serious health hazard has been reported, but in some cases, severe reactions such as allergic skin allergic reactions or respiratory allergic reactions with the use of hair dyes, hair colors, irritation, humidogenicity, genotoxicity, photosensitivity, etc. has been reported. So photosensitivity mostly with the uh, products some like uh, retinol containing formulations, right, which are meant for hyperpigmentation or anti-aging. Anti so uh, 
long term and repeated uses of certain cosmetics or functional cosmetics i have used the word functional cosmetics because cosmetics is a very broader term very wide term because cosmetics can be colored cosmetics we can be uh, used for for the for change in temporary appearance but the functional cosmetics are being recommended by our dermatologists or cosmetologists for the purpose of aesthetics so now uh, the aesthetics practice is very much growing so hence his safety and efficacy evaluation is the most desirable step prior to release in market is the key responsibility of the manufacturer however this clause need to be they are in the rules need to be they are in the rules maybe by some guidelines right because in the pharmaceutical we under schedule m we have a provision we have a uh, some provision for the for this uh, that is the responsibility of the manufacturer to release the test the drug or it should be of standard quality prior to uh, they should test it for prior to release in the market whereas uh i feel that uh, there is uh, no expressed expressed uh, language is there in the rules may i have a next slide please so iccr advises that the in ingredients in the product shall be characterized through the relevant physical chemical data that is purity profiling impurity profiling any chemical structure and identification at some time you all know please that uh, all the pharma uh, this cosmeceutical products or cosmetics products are multi ingredient products the active may be one two or three but the neutral uh, materials are much more they may be eight or 10 and like that so there shall be profound knowledge on the exposure of the product uh, to be established how the product is to be used it is to be rubbed like raja bhanu ji told or it is to be applied in simply in the same manner or it is to be absorbed by rubbing etc the quantity used in single application most of the pharmaceutical uh, cosmetical products does not bear this direct how much quantity quantity is to be used which have a its good effect and efficacy for the desired purpose so what should be its frequency of uses duration of intended use because uh, see many of the uh, functional cosmetics are being used for months and years together because hyperpigmentation etc or uh, acne scar is such a problem with the youngsters so uh, until uh, it does not vanish from this and they and they continue for its usage and what is its target user etc so based upon the exposure data of the product the safety margin and exposure margin are calculated using the relevant rules see like retinol preparation you take uh, uh, from the market the retinol preparations available in the market may be in this form of cream or serum so you will hardly found the uh, equivalent percentage uh, whatever the loading dose and therapeutic dose of the retinol is there they do not tighter most of do not tight so be, uh, so safety assessment of product may lead to conclude fitness of the product like i have given you the example of retinol so retinol is a very good product for uh, anti aging and for uh, uh, reducing the blemishes and uh, uh, for uh, reducing the even acne scar also but it is a uh, one this quality when it is when uh, the skin is exposed to the sunlight or to the heat right it causes a irritation so in my view the uh, manufacturer must carry on the fast post marketing surveillance about their products after releasing to the market so what kind of uh, uh, adverse reactions are happening 
or what kinds of side effects are happening to the public, they must get, take the, uh, you can say, uh, take the feedback from the users or the from the cosmetologist or from the dermatologist and appro uh, and based upon such data the manufacturer can make the improvement in the products next slide so why safety why safety is required why safety evaluation is required so see the size of this segment the size of this segment uh, uh, is, uh, we can't say it is a small, it is a big size, right? As Raja Bhanuji rightly said that uh, most of the, when I was on the seat as a state drug controller or joint commissioner, my entire focus was uh, usually on the, to control the pharmaceutical because uh, there was a very much hue and cry in our state that the intoxicants are being sold and like that and some of the not of standard quality drugs and uh, are being sold into the market it is traveling from this side to this side right we always used to uh, control these activities and uh, this remains the this cosmetics and uh, veterinary section was remain the gray area and we got a very less time to make a control on the uh, quality of cosmetics as well as on the animal products. So uh, as my past experience, I want to share with you my past experience regarding the quality control on animal products. So the uh, size of this uh, segment, animal products is about 15,000 crore, 15,000 crore in our country. Right? So it is not a small, right? Our focus was not on that. And we have detected about 18 spurious products. And out of that, seven, eight products were found to contain zero contents, zero contents. So with that uh, particular our campaign, we were able to improve the quality of the animal products in our state. So similarly, during the COVID time in 2020, you know, the, uh, this was a uh, hand sanitizer was in very much in right? So people, uh, because there was directions from the uh, government also to use the hand sanitizer, sanitize your hand and sanitizer, sanitize your belongings, etc. So that there shall be minima, minimum transmission of the coronavirus, the content. So uh, when we have seen that uh, we have given the permission under cosmetics as well as under drug the various manufacturers uh, to manufacture the yes, sanitizer, hand sanitizers to meet up the demand of the public. So what uh, we have observed after a few days that uh, the quality of the sanitizer appears to be not good. Right? We started collecting the samples. When we collected the samples, the astonishing factors uh, were there that uh, some of the products were found containing 80%, 70%, 60% of methanol in place of IP. And you all know, dear friends, what are the side and adverse effects of the methanol? It is highly toxic. Some of the manufacturer may be, may be manufacturing clandestinely and they were using the recovered IPA or recovered ethanol. Right? That was also containing a lot of impurity. So instead of preventing the infection, such poor quality of sanitizer have started deteriorating the health of the public. So we took the, we draw about 250 samples of the sanitizer and we detected about 25 samples as not of standard quality. And out of those 18 samples were found containing a percentage of methanol uh, that is uh, varying from 60% to 85% of methanol. So now you can assess the situation, how, was, uh, how much uh, bad quality of product was available for the use of the public, right? And it was our moral duty to control the uh, such kind of bad products, bad quality products and provide the good quality product to the 
public so because we cannot compromise with the health of the public so available what available data reflects that on an average an adult male uses nine products in routine cosmetics products starting from toothpaste as uh, very well said by bangaru rajendri that we start uh, in the morning uh, first from toothpaste right so our first cosmetics use is the toothpaste so at least uh, nine products maybe some male may be using more than nine products right to look younger than their age and to look more nice and good right and more attractive so females are using more than the male that is 15 products and maybe more than that daily so uses of i feel uses of cosmetics products is more than the uses of our food article as well as uses of the medicine article drug article so that is that is why we need to have a safety evaluation because the usage of cosmetic products is too high in our society nowadays so cosmetics toiletries personal hygiene care products skin care products including sunscreens and are the major contributors for the even, even for the hospital reference so dermatologists are be have be, have, have been uh, they are prescribing uh, such kind of uh, uh, cosmetics products and uh, some of uh, products have definitely allergic reaction that why i will let you know in my next slide what are the risk factors right what are the ingredients which are responsible i will give you some examples for this uh, allergic contact dermatitis we see available data also reflects a 1 to 3% of the population are allergic to their either to the entire formulation or to some individual ingredient so uh, cpg polyethylene glycol was very much in news a few few months back by in the even in the pharmaceutical sector one of the one or two of the pharmaceutical manufacturer have used the polyethylene glycol as a solubilizer for paracetamol and for cough syrup and uh, per chance may, he may not have tested the polyethylene glycol and uh, nine deaths has been occurred by consume of the children by consuming that uh, that preparation that formulation because that was containing dietylene glycol as a impurity and that is too in high percentage and 3.3% incidences of contact allergy dermatitis are with use of hair colors hair dyes right the old man like me they are fond of keeping their hair black they don't want to have their gray hairs and they they frequently use this uh, hair colors and hair dyes and after that they they are they are searching for some anti itch agent anti itch cosmetic or anti itch some preparation so after uh, applying the hair color and after washing their head they used to apply that that type of preparation so lipstick and shaving creams have more incidences that is 59.2% and then photo allergic dermatitis are adverse reaction has been reported to be 35% in the population so due to these these uh, you can say this qualities of the products cosmetics product we need to evaluate uh, these are such kind of products for safety and to comply with the consumer and patient safety and to gain the confidence of the consumer consumers so that uh, the product sustainability shall be clear so why efficacy evaluation is required See, there are nowadays you will find most of the products maybe on online or maybe offline. Offline, when you are dermatologist or cosmetologist prescribes the products because everyone want to look at good from uh, attractive face, want to look an attractive face. So no one want ki even a uh, you can say pin size of uh, uh, spot shall be there on the face, right? He should have a very good face so that he would have a good recognition and uh, 
good looking in the society. So uh, the products with the larger claims are with uh, those are having a claim of anti wrinkles, anti aging, skin even toning products, maybe face wash or maybe some creams and some serums. So serums are very much in trend nowadays. So sun screening agents, then uh, hair rejuvenators and mask etc. So the manufacturers, big manufacturer, uh, of course they have adopted some technologies and uh, when the sale of the products, just to increase the sale of the product, the small manufacturer also started making claim on the label that they have adopted such and such technologies. What are the I have some examples of the technology. These are encapsulation, time release, targeted release, targeted site delivery system, sun microphone technology, and liposomes. Liposome technology is a very frequent technology which is used in the used in the cosmeceuticals product. Then nanotechnology. Most of the sun screens are with the nanotechnology are available in the market. So here is big question mark is that whether the manufacturer who is claiming on the label that he has adopted this technology, whether he has actually adopted or not, or it is a only misleading claim on the label. We don't have such a mechanism on in place to verify these facts. So thus, uh, uh, efficacy evaluation is necessary to prove that claim or claimed benefits by being accurately or being such benefits are being accurately communicated to the consumer or delivered to the consumer by the product. How it can be out? So we need to have a, some sort of guidelines for the claim substantiation. So of course, we in our country, we don't have guidelines right now. We may have some provision in the rules 020 for the safety, right? That is for two for the hazards only. Right, but the internationally OLIPA guidelines are there for evaluation of the cosmetics products. However, these are also quite old now, 2008. Yes, right. So, why we need safety of the why do we need safety, safe products uh, for our use being a consumer, right? So, you see. What are the what are the factors for the these factors for the uh, making the product ineffective or making the product a risky product for uses or harmful product? These are the impurities, which which usually comes from either from raw material, right? Raw materials which are we are using or neutral materials, which we are using for manufacture of the or base for the manufacture of a cosmos. So if you go to go in, if you see the international scenario, if we talk about the US FDA, US FDA has defined the impurity percentage in the even in the some bases or some in the neutral material to be used for the purpose of uh, manufacture of the cosmetics. Like one for dioxin, the US FDA has has defined its limit in the uh, in the neutral uh, base is is that is two ppm and now it is going to be one ppm in the month of October two zero double two. But uh, I think uh, we don't have such guidelines for uh, such purposes, right? Maybe some monographs, uh, the some materials, some uh, you can say solubilizers, co-solubilizer maybe official in the IP or DP and USP may be or may have. They are uh, may contain may have some reference of the impurities and their percentage in the impurities which are acceptable for and which are harmless for the use in the money. So some impurities can be desirable and undesirable or undesirable. So desirable when it is desirable when it is defined in the to the limits. So impurities how we can identify the impurities that is through either through chemical method or by instrumental method right or uh, their safety level 
need to be determined. So whereas residual impurities may be from water or contact part of the machine or equipments in which we are manufacturing the product. Or it may, may come from the container or closures, right? Like uh, the, we need to, the manufacturer need to study the nature of the formulation and in what, uh, what container, what nature of the containers is required for its safety because some of the containers may, may uh, uh, some of the products or some of the ingredients, active ingredients are, you can say, some of the neutral ingredients may have a leaching effect, right? May, and uh, uh, they may leach out some of the toxic material from the containers and fluids. Impurities, residual contaminants present in, present in the raw material finished products can be acceptable within the specified limits and in harmless concentration. As I have uh, just told you that uh, the uh, limits of the uh, such ingredients must be defined. It is not defined in, the, in our format. Next slide. So these are some examples of the harmful impurities like one food dioxin is uh, present in propendiol. Propendiol diol is used in some of the products as a co-solubilizer, right? And diethylene glycol, I have already told you that is used in, uh, that, is, uh, uh, that is present in PEG. And in the majority of the cosmetics product we are using, the manufacturers using polyethylene glycol. Right. Then heavy metals, all color cosmetics, they contains uh, the impurities of the uh, heavy metals like mercury, antimony, arsenic, chromium, nickel, lead, cobalt, and cadmium. Then BHA is there, bisphenyl is there, nitrosamines is there, formaldehyde is there. So these are some harmful impurities are available in the cheaper products. In the cheaper products. Next slide, please. So what is the impact of such impurities when these are uh, present in, in their undesirable concentration in the formulations or in an individual ingredient? That is a contact dermatitis, carcinogenicity, endocrine disruption. This is very common in many of the, many of the ingredients, endocrine disruption. Then vital organ damage, hair loss, genotoxicity, neurotoxicity. Next slide, please. So, uh, see our uh, the cheaper in, uh, product products which are available in the market uh, may contain these and uh, these products just to reduce the cost of the finished product because there is a tough competition in the market. So, when there is a tough competition in the market, the small manufacturer. What they does, they substitute the solvents and co-solvents, right? And these are these are the uh, substances or these are the ingredients which are required to be avoided because these can be these can be substituted in place of some other ingredient. That is parabens, carbon black, triclosan, petroleum jelly, phthalates. So petroleum jelly is uh, usually available in most of the Vaseline products like foot care products, hand care products, right? Then ethanol means formaldehyde, oxybenzone. This is uh, uh, most of our sunscreening agent contains combination of uh, oxybenzone. Then mineral oils are they are in most of the uh, face creams. Right. And uh, then in shampoos and uh, in, uh, even in face washes. Then aromatic hydrocarbons, waxes, paraffins, synthetic fragrances. So synthetic fragrances are also known to cause a lot of allergic reactions among the users. Next. So these are a uh, few factors which are also responsible for cross-contamination. Heavy metals we have already talked, then microbial contamination. So from where this microbial contamination comes in the products because if you see in most of the 
most of the face washing you see and uh, most of the creams, you will find that the manufacturer are using the uh, extracts of some plants, natural plants, right? Sometimes they, uh, they get deteriorated when they are not manufactured uh, uh, properly by the uh, raw API manufacturer or they are not being preserved properly. Right, the microbial contamination is usually come from the extracts. Then organic hydrocarbons, this, this comes from containers and closures in which we packed our, the manufacturer packed their finished formulations. So this is a again part of the R&D at the level of cosmetics manufacture. So I feel in this case, the product designing is again required. We can control the quality of the product by, by design. So this is a uh, provisions available in our latest cosmetics rule 2020, right? Rule 34 uh, cosmetics rule uh, mandates for labeling of cosmetics. That is a manner of labeling. What should a product container, uh, product label uh, should uh, uh, contain the directions and ingredients and usage and etc. Like that and also the some of the directions for its uh, safe use and for uh, uh, storage conditions. So, uh, if you see some of the some of the products may not can uh, bear the proper label conditions, right? They only uh, they only print the key ingredients only, and they conceal rest of the ingredients of the uh, preparation or finished formulation, right? So in my considered view, the manufacturer must write all the ingredients available in the product formulation. At least consumer shall know whether any of the individual ingredient is uh, not suitable to him or her. So complete information must be there only table regarding the composition of the product. So as you know, rule 33 deals with the prohibition against false or misleading claim. So there are certain cosmetics available in the market which do carry the false or misleading claim. What is claimed that does not happen actually. Maybe few products. I'm not uh, uh, blaming all products are like this, no. Um, any good manufacturers are there and they are uh, not uh, referring to any misleading. Right? Then rule 39 deals with the standards of cosmetics. That is a ninth schedule as Raja Banuji told that we have standards there. Our and uh, manufacturer must make a compliance of the standards with the ninth schedule. Next slide, please. So, uh, I will uh, invite the kind attention of Bangaru Rajanji. Bangaru Rajanji, if he is uh, there. So my humble request to Bangaru Rajanji as well as to the ADCOR that from this platform, these issues may be addressed to the for our respectable DCGI. Right? That there shall be minimum guidelines for the evaluation of the efficacy of cosmetics production. There. Yeah. Then there shall be minimum guidelines for the evaluation of the safety of cosmetics product, as both these evaluation of efficacy and evaluation of safety is the consumer's right. Right? If the consumer is paying for the exorbitantly for procurement of a for purchase of a product, in turn he should get the, the benefits of that benefit of that product, right? The product must perform whatever is claimed on the label. Then there shall be minimum guidelines for claim substantiation shall be there for certain products, especially with the larger claims. And the manufacturer must, uh, must, uh, is, uh, must reflect some backend or scientific data in, in the inserts of the 
uh, finished products so that there shall not be any cheating with the consumer so consumer should know have a knowledge brief knowledge that really the manufacturer is claiming on some back end data whatever he is claiming that is that is correct so it means the manufacturer is not concealing any fact from the consumer so it should be must be there because consumer is very important for the manufacturer or for the seller he is a very important person for the seller or for the consumer. if there is no sale for the product then why the manufacturing is required right so with this i i am thankful to all the participants who have uh, listened to my presentation patiently and i am very thankful to madam lakshmi who has given me the opportunity raja bhanu ji and to the all the office bearers of the ad park who has given me the opportunity to interact with the academia with the regulators of uh, the entire country and with the manufacturers and with the consumers so uh, thank you very much and have a nice day any question please thank you so much uh, sir uh, for the elaborate discussion on the aspects of the safety and efficacy of these cosmeceuticals and the kind of uh, products which are hazardous or uh, in terms of a risk factoring um, products uh, uh, for this cosmetics cosmeceuticals and we really appreciate the kind of uh, attention that are needed in terms of the regulations in uh, framing up these guidelines for the efficacy and safety evaluation and the claim especially the claiming factors involved with uh, backed by the supporting data so with that we open the floor for the discussions uh, the question and answer and i would urge all the participants to Uh, share your questions in Q and A so that we could take it up uh, and have a discussion, de deliberated discussions on those points. Uh, sir, I could see a couple of questions in the Q and A. Uh, one from Mr. Girish Vaghela. Uh, what are the standards to be accepted for the product uh, external inmate care product by a local manufacturer? Uh, I'm repeating the question, sir. What are the standards to be accepted for the product external inmate care by a local manufacturer? External, external inmate care. Okay. so standards are very much defined in the schedule in, in the schedule ninth schedule right uh, these standards is to be followed are very much detailed in the in the schedule uh, i will request to refer to ninth schedule so that uh, he can have a complete knowledge about that uh, about uh, the standards So, okay. as for as the uh, as for as the standards regarding some some of the uh, this uh, active ingredients some of the active ingredients are uh, official in pharmacopoeia also like uh, we are using chlorhexidine and there are some products some apis which have a dual use this is i it's kind enough to release the list of those those ingredients also which have a dual, dual use right so this uh, where there is a dual use we can refer to the even pharmacopoeia because these those products are official in pharmacopoeia also and have it they are individual monograph yeah mr waghela is our officer from daman okay i think yeah yes sir and he is quite well versed uh, he's been also uh, contributing uh, his thought points and also observations with respect to various cosmetics and all for okay. quite some time okay yeah i think i think uh, yeah we appreciate uh, vagela uh, asking i can i can send a detail information to him by mail i have given a mail mail yes, id on my yes, first slide because this is a uh, standards is a little bit very exhaustive exhaustive matter Yeah, Lakshmi can take yes. second. Next question. Yeah, next question, sir. Uh, 
sir could you throw some light on the usage of natural ingredients in the cosmetic cosmetics sir and what are all the points to be considered when a manufacturer uses these natural ingredients yeah ma'am see uh, there are nowadays uh, some of the natural ingredients are available in the form of uh, extracts so uh, some of the manufacturers are uh, situated in uh, uh, himachal and some are here in the south states those are extracted those are the question is there is whether they are actually standardizing their extracts or not because uh, see uh, uh, for for a, uh, to make the product effective we need a specific concentration of the of the uh, active ingredient right and uh, that uh, i don't feel ki uh, that is uh, very much not there but there are some uh, good manufacturers uh, outside our country also which are making the isolates even the complex of the like like uh, you see uh, so you see some of the vitamin c serum available in the market they are with the with the uh, suproxy technology is there now what is suproxy suproxy is a complex of natural vitamin c from the natural source that is from pakadu plum which which is being grown in the australia and suproxy is a transport system built by the uh, manufacturer in that is australian manufacturer so they, have, they are very much providing the back end data they have a scientific data with them and study with them that is a, on a, how many subject they have carried out the evaluation and safety of the product so that is a two ways of uh, two ways of establishing the safety and efficacy that is one on the human subject another by instrument and they provide the data so whereas some of the uh, manufacturer those are manufacturing the extracts of the natural plants right some are providing and some are not they uh, those are providing their cost product is too high so the smaller manufacturer may not be accepting their products because now the aloe vera is gel aloe vera gel see used in most of the and neem is used most of the products right so if you uh, there are some of the manufacturer those are providing the aloe vera gel at the rate of 120 150 rupees kg and there are some manufacturer they are providing the aloe vera gel at the rate of 850 or 1000 rupees So there is a huge gap. So at a rate of 150, you can expect, you cannot expect the scientific data from a manufacturer, right? So I will request the manufacturer to have a natural products from only those manufacturer. I am not uh, marketing uh, the those manufacturer, but I am on the uh, on the in the interest of the consumer. I am talking, right? that the if you will have a uh, this is a raw material from a some good manufacturer who has a established data or back end study right even uh, only that product can because if, if uh, the product does not contain the appropriate concentration of the active content it cannot perform well so from a regulatory point of view Uh, sir, uh, uh, what are the natural ingredients which are being used from the plants, or even if, as you said that aloe vera, cucumber, or whatever it may be, all those things and all. I think sir, they are they are claiming they are being claimed as herbal cosmetics or something like that. Sir, I have a discussion uh, on this aloe vera with the at Naipur and even in the Punjab University uh, with the, the very senior faculty, and uh, they are. Uh, they are not in favor of the aloe vera they say now there has a established studies that the aloe vera does not have much beneficial effects on the health so i have asked can i see nature nature has some indication the aloe vera bears some thorns right if you you see the plant succulent of the aloe vera on the both sides of the aloe vera you find the spikes of the spikes spikes of uh, spikes on the even the animal cannot eat that right see the if it is a so good the nature must have provided in a good form yes. right so naipur people and uh, this uh, 
पी यू पंजाब यूनिवर्सिटी मास्ट स्टडी यू आई पी एस सम ऑफ द टीचर्स ऑफ द यू दैट कोर्स द एलोवेरा इज इन ट्रेंड बट वी आर नॉट इन फेवर ऑफ एलोवेरा दैट हैज ए वेरी गुड और बेनिफिशियल इफेक्ट्स ऑन द स्किन only the only point, regulatory point of view whether these herbal cosmetics which are which are not in the purview of Sir, the uh, this is, this is uh, one of the unfortunate part that the <laughs> natural products are covered in uh, under two regulations yes <laughs> under our again cosmetics Sir, and another no, i use in instead of instead of in two regulations they are falling between two chairs neither yes. this nor neither that yes sir Uh, i think that that is that is going to be a regulatory uh, issue with, with 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 these things these cosmetics and safety okay. and efficacy as you said that who should control and who will be uh, who will be holding that and who will be holding uh, 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 responsibility for that one <laughs> only dc can can help out in okay. this matter yeah you can request like, our dcgi to have a minimum guidelines on the uh, efficacy and safety because you see the uh, some of the uh, face washes and some of the serums they are uh, available at so much exorbitant rate 7000 to 15000 rupees may be imported right but we need to uh, evaluate their uh, substantiate their uh, efficacy right or claim substantiate their claim whether they actually perform or or we are just spending the money on such products A word from a word from Bangar Rajan, sir. Uh, yes, sir. I think first I have to congratulate uh, Dr. Pratip uh, for taking this uh, untouched subject, <laughs> that is the uh, cosmetics uh, uh, product safety and uh, risk influencing. Because normally, uh, as uh, uh, Raja Banu sir had told that, uh, that is we are mainly concentrating on the uh, drugs. and then spurious drugs and all all other things most of our time that is our officers time is uh, in regulating the uh, drugs and drug related and medical devices related uh, issues only so the cosmetics is in the back seat uh, so taking this uh, subject and then highlighting the need of uh, our consumers is uh, first time to congratulate uh, dr mattu and then regarding uh, the standards and other things uh, uh the drugs uh, and cosmetics act no oh, and the cosmetic rules uh, depends on mostly on the bas uh, standards so that is the first thing so bas uh, while setting up the standards uh, that is one of uh, a member from uh, cdsco is also present so that is uh, while uh, setting the standards for the cosmetics cdsco is a representative is there so that uh, there that is the cdsco or the regulators views are also being uh, given as an input and accordingly the ba standards are been formulated so that is first thing uh, and then uh, regarding uh, there is a uh, uh, guidelines and other things in the bas itself what are the ingredients to be included are used in the cosmetics is also that is prohibitory classes are there in the bas so those prohibitory uh, raw materials should not be used in the cosmetics that is uh, first and foremost and uh, the next point is that uh, how to standardize or how to get the guidelines of uh, efficacy and safety of the cosmetics so since uh, it has come Uh, so as already stated that the uh, scope is there so it will uh, come into the uh, further that is uh, it can be taken up uh, during our uh, tcc meetings and then uh, sub uh, committees may be formed so that uh, their views can be presented while uh, the bas uh, meetings are taking place on the cosmetics also or how to go about further Because sir my my another third point is sorry i am this uh, sir sure, sure. that is a claim substantiation uh, claims no that is also the, the short no that is claims yes. and other things no uh, so we have to request the applicants sir. yes so we have to ask the applicants sir. and he shall give some data back and data yes 
so that is uh, my view because you no know, the only the people while coming for the licensing they are saying that uh, this is having this much effect uh, this effect that effect so we should as a regulator we should ask the applicants to provide the sufficient data yes sir so only after that uh, we should uh, give them the uh, proper uh, uh, permissions or approvals so that is uh, one of the thing and uh, regarding that sanitizers some of the sanitizers uh, have been licensed uh, in cosmetics and then uh, uh, as a drug <laughs> so so we should be that is all regulators in all the states should follow the same so we should not uh, say it is a cosmetic it should be a said drug because the claim and everything sanitizer falls under the drug category only to my knowledge and then uh, so it is uh, our regulatory bodies yeah. all the states uh, should take a uni- uniform stand so that uh, uh, it will take and then further uh, some of the sir i just for, i i will like to add something more sure sir even a huge people has granted the permission to manufacture sanitizers uh, <laughs> yes sir <laughs> So, so many that is not that is as a drug, as a IH drug, as a cosmetics. So, everybody is uh, it makes the consumer uh, difficult which one to uh, choose, and then uh, whether uh, the claims are being properly uh, followed well before uh, giving the permissions. So, these things uh, to be taken into care, and then. Uh, uh, before that is the cosmetics uh, registrations uh, uh, import registration i am telling that is previously it was uh, for 3 years now we have enhanced up to 5 years like the, uh, our uh, cosmetics uh, uh, regulations that not not that is uh, individual domestic manufacturers once in 5 years like that and uh, before giving a grant of uh, registration so every aspects are being uh, evaluated or uh, by the our auditors then only it has been issued there is especially the colors and then the cos are uh, uh, are reviewed by our officers and then only the registrations of those uh, cosmetics are being uh, given so this is regarding the registration purposes of the imported cosmetics right. so uh, my uh, consider to use that uh, uh, we that is uh, some of the regulators may take up this matter of framing a draft guidelines and then uh, on the safety and efficacy uh, since uh, as of now there is no necessity for a trial for a cosmetics in our uh, act and rules so we can take up this a group of uh, members uh, the senior members uh, can take up this and uh, we may just give or come out with a draft guidelines so that it will be useful for all regulators in the state uh, to follow it and then a minimum uh, thing will be seen before uh, a product is uh, issued with a cosmetic license so with this uh, small uh, thing i am uh, hope that uh, it will uh, serious views are being uh, given to the participants thank you thank you sir i think the, uh, quickly uh, i think some of the questions can be taken up yeah, before yeah. we wind I up yeah yeah i see a lot of uh, questions pouring <laughs> in the in chat box and yeah, yeah. the kya and the, some uh, of them are common i think you can just uh, yes write. yes sir uh, i I, rec- i recognize the presence of professor uh, bijan kumar mishra ji the consumer oh, activity <laughs> and who with whom we had a wonderful discussion on the consumer awareness and yeah. uh, we are so uh, can you take yeah, him on the panel uh, quickly not possible then i can find not quite sure sir i could see his uh, of comments. course comments are uh, <laughs> uh, questions like i mean oh, so why are the regulators are shying away from the prosecuting these manufacturers of unsafe products and uh, why the regulators are not creating awareness uh, on the safety of these cosmetics products <laughs> so these are the couple of comments that i could see from professor vijan mishra ji and uh, probably uh, we can make some comments on these uh, 
uh, on this point, uh, remarks of Professor Bijanji. Yeah, we will we'll, we'll keep it in mind. I think before we close it, I think we'll we will we'll ensure uh, Bijanji with, uh, with the right, kind right. of action. <laughs> sir, Plan. please, sir, Pradeepji. Uh, Ma'am, can I can I have please for this uh, for uh, the academia that uh, regulators are very much they are of the quality of the and safety of the products. Right. Wherever we buy, wherever we observe, we we seize the products. Right. There, I I will let you uh, tell. Uh, I want to one, uh, one want to share one experience. There was one one paste available in the market that was containing very high contents of tobacco. Right. That was recommended for evacuation of the bowel, and because this uh, your uh, nicotine stimulates the Bowel movements, right? So we we took the sample, we seized the product in the Punjab, right? We carried out the investigation. We got we got it tested. It was found to containing thirty eight to forty percent of tar in it, right? And that was really carcinogenic product, right? And uh, we we carried out the thorough investigation by visiting to the Gujarat. And then we referred the matter to the DCJ, and DCJ was kind enough to put up the matter before DTAB and ultimately that product was spread. Yeah. So whenever it comes to yeah. the office of the regulators, right, we do take, but uh, the consumer shall also come forward. Academia should also come forward. They they shall also they may collect the product from the market which has a uh, which are which contains harmful product. Like uh, Niper is uh, continu continuously making its efforts on pharmaceutical. I will request uh, the uh, Niper here in Mohali also to have a uh, little bit focus on the um, uh, this pharmaceutical products also. So uh, the uh, academia has a sufficient uh, infrastructure to carry out the R and D on this uh, these uh, pharmaceutical products, right? And uh, are uh, the they can the uh, this academia can also refer the matter to the uh, drug regulatory, right? Ki these such and such products are available in the market. It has come to their notice; they are harmful and not performing, right? And uh, the regulators are can take the measures about that. And uh, I like I told you that the we have uh, in Punjab we we control the quality of the uh, hand sanitizer also. And similar in the same way. The regulators uh, are in position to control the harmful products, and they can weed out such harmful products from the market. Yeah, but for the benefit yeah. of everybody, I think uh, we, uh, uh, let me tell you that uh, under the leadership of uh, Pradeep Ji, I think they have a very good uh, laboratory in Punjab uh, established. I think so is the case with other states also with the central funds. I think a lot of uh, drug control laboratories are 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 uh, I think they're uh, upcoming and also. Uh, improving their facility uh, uh, in all the different states and all. Uh, I think, yeah, I think maybe Bijanji, I think we, we ensure you that uh, I think uh, there is no shy away from taking the responsibility of uh, prosecuting anybody who is uh, found with any NSQ of any cosmetic or anything. And definitely we will, as you said, uh, suggested uh, that uh, for uh, bringing the awareness in the public, yes, that could be one, one important point. Uh, like a Grahak Jago, I think that kind of a thing will be added not only to the yeah. drugs and also to the cosmetics also. Yes, sir. That's right, sir. And ultimately, it's the collaborative efforts of uh, all the uh, fraternity and even the uh, entire population uh, to yes. see whether the claims, whatever uh, they are believing by looking at those media. So they, they should come forward and give a hint or indication to the regulators to have a back evaluation whether the claim is correct or not. Yeah. And uh, uh, sir, I, I I could see some more questions also, but uh, in the interest of time, uh, may I take may I take one or two more questions, sir? Sure. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, there is a question from Mr. Jairam uh, that uh, human stem cell media are being used by a Korean anti-aging product. So, can we use call this product as a cosmetic agent or not? Can you repeat the ma'am question? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, a Korean anti-aging product is using the human cell stem cell media. Okay. So 
considering no. this fact, can we call this product as a cosmetic agent or not? Since Which Korea it is, is North Korea, used... South Korea. <laughs> <laughs> so for the time being, let's keep the Korea part aside. And it's so only South Korea, sir. <laughs> so if the anti-aging product uses this human stem cell media, so can we consider this product as a cosmetic agent or not? So a a any thoughts on this, sir? Ma'am, uh, still there are uh, too much gray area in the cosmetic regulation, right? So I think uh, human using of human stem cell uh, is not uh, proven uh, the, uh, for use in the cosmetics. So this is again uh, uh, a clarification is required from the DCI, but in my opinion, it should not be used. Human cells stem cells shall not be used because in the cosmetics because uh, 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 even uh, very few um, in the blood banks uh, with the for stem cell preserving this human stem cell has been granted even this concept has not been widely accepted uh, in, in our country right only the metro cities may be having the blood banks human stem cell blood banks only so I think uh, allowing this uh, such types of uh, products uh, in the Indian market in, may not be safe for the public. I think uh, it's not human stem cell. They are saying that it is human stem cell media. Media, right. Media. So not the stem cells. So it, whatever it is, no. our main thing is that uh, media contains the normal uh, ingredients I only. See. I see, I see. So it's uh, like yeah. that now we can say it is a uh, claim Clean. saying that it is stem cell media. That's all. Stem cell. So it, it should not be having any uh, stem cells in that product. Only for the purpose of uh, uh, advertising and other things, no, they will be claiming it has a human stem cell media. So stem cells will not be there. Yeah, that's what I think Pradeep ji was telling that all claims by anybody just like that. For the sake of claim claiming. substitution, the guidance for claim substitution must be there. So, right. so see, sir, uh, um, either you, uh, we, we as a regulator and uh, as a consumer, we do not know what the what kind of real role is to be played by the stem cell media for, as an anti aging agent. Right? So, this is again need to be evaluated. He has just made a claim. Just to capture the market, because the, the manufacturer may want to be a unique uh, product introducer in the market. So, so we need to need to control such activity. If he has a really he has a, some scientific data, he must produce right. And uh, before uh, import before uh, the importing of such products in our country. I think, I think uh, the regulatory authority, maybe CDSE or maybe state regulatory authority must ask the uh, manufacturer uh, to produce such a, some scientific data or backend data, whether your claim is correct or not. Yeah. Or they are just uh, befooling the public. Yeah, Lakshmi, I think yeah. next one. Uh, sir, uh, uh, a, a kind of a similar question I could see is that uh, some companies are using the placenta extract for skin rejuvenation under the cosmetics division. So, do they consider? I mean, do we consider them as a cosmetics or drugs? Ma'am, uh, uh, I remember we have one pharmaceutical preparation injection placenta extract. That is a injection placenta extract. I think so. And uh, till date. Uh, this is not being was not being used into the cosmetics. Only one preparation was allowed to market to the pharmaceutical product only. Yes. Thank you, sir. So with that, I'm, uh, I'll wind off the Q and A part. Uh, sir, any any, I think any comments, we have, sir? We have, we have Pradeep ji's email uh, and all. I think for otherwise also, I think uh, whoever who have some more questions to come, I think they can address it to the AADCOC. I think from there we can uh, forward it to Pradeep ji for uh, 
a proper sure, clarification. Sure. Yes, sir. Sure. I think that will save our uh, yes, yes, time uh, a lot. And as a practice, we'll be sharing the presentation with all the participants after this program. Yeah. And the presentation uh, uh, has the email ID of Dr. Pradeep Ji. So the participants who so have, I could see some of the similar, I mean, like the same names are posing too many questions. Perhaps they may be able to uh, very keen to approach Dr. Pradeep Ji for a detailed discussion on that. Yeah. So we'll be sharing the presentation with all the participants for sure. Thanks, George. And uh, so we, with that, uh, we almost uh, come to the end of the session. And uh, may I now invite uh, Rajwandu sir uh, uh, for the closing remarks. Yeah. Thank you, Lakshmi. And uh, thank you, Pradeep ji, for a uh, uh, very uh, lucid and exhaustive presentation on uh, the topic which was given, uh, which was taken by you rather, uh, very interestingly and passionately uh, with, with the kind of experience you had of three decades and observations and, and, and also uh, on behalf of the consumers, which you always felt that um, these are the uh, these are the issues which are always bothering uh, with respect to the cosmetics. I think that kind of a presentation has really helped all the uh, participants uh, to have a, a peek into all those uh, nuances of all these issues which are coming up. Uh, and mostly the regulatory aspects of it as we have rightly started in the beginning that uh, most of our time and energy is being spent on uh, uh, on the issues of drugs rather than cosmetics. And now with this kind of things which you have uh, highlighted very well with respect to safety and efficacy uh, and the evaluation of those things, uh, though it is there in the BIA standards and all, but still, uh, as we all know that the law is, is not tailor-made for everything and all, and, and we, it, is, it is continuously ev evolving. And uh, rightly that Bangarajan has, uh, has said about that, that uh, uh, the guidelines can be brought in uh, much more to the one which is already there in vogue. Uh, I think that will really help in uh, uh, finding that if there is a, an issues of safety and efficacy with respect to the cosmetics, because the kind of size of the cosmetics which is there in the, in the market and the application part, I think uh, the nine products by male and 15 products by female, I, th I think where I think they, they definitely the sensitivity of the skin uh, to those products and all. And definitely there will be issues which are coming up, I think, uh, to uh, mitigate those things and all. We need to be more careful with respect to the licensing of these products and all. And, and there are some gray areas, as you, as Pradeep Ji has said. And we should and, be more, more careful while grant of license. What yes, sir. Is yes. Required? yes, now that uh, licensing is more, uh, more made more easily with respect to the digitalization online kind of a thing. Uh, rather, they uh, issue the license and then examine all those things and all. Only the documentary review is there. I think still there is a long way to go uh, with respect to uh, keenly go through the uh, uh, the licensing part and the evaluation part and then uh, the uh, the kind of uh, testing part of all these the things and also look into the tall claims made by these. Uh, uh, the manufacturers and their products and more importantly the labeling part of it and what it really contains has not been displayed and now I think most of the things our provisions should should in, in, include those kind of things to make it mandatory that what are the ingredients which are there as, as uh, Pradeep ji has listed out what are those ingredients which has to be avoided which has uh, which has which are supposed not to be taken in, uh, uh, for as into the cosmetics and also that the consumer also knows about these things what are the ingredients in that so that the labeling provisions should mandate these things to be to be mentioned on the packs of the products especially of course in couple of things only they have given that uh, the hair uh, dyes and all that it has to be in both in english and local languages but i think for the other things also it should be a bit mandatory for all those things so that the consumer uh, is is the one who will try to bring it out whenever they find some uh, because this is a idiosyncratic most of the times Definitely, he'll be uh, the dermatologist will be will be will be affected, and naturally, they want to complain about a particular product, and naturally, that will bring the uh, uh, they will catch the eye of the regulator, and then so is the uh, regulations will be uh, the provisions will be uh, enforced. I think uh, thank you so much, sir, on behalf of uh, All India Drug Control Officers Confederation, on behalf of our DG, I mean, honorary DG Uday Bhaskarji, and uh, uh, advisor Desh Pandeji, and all our my president Jayanta Chaudhary, and all our EC members, Central Council members. We thank you once again, sir, for a for a great presentation of the topic on this one. And I also thank uh, uh, the panelists, uh, our uh, very we call it as the Bangar. 
<laughs> the the golden boy <laughs> here and uh, and bijan ji and other uh, members who have joined from various uh, facets uh, both industry as well as academia uh, for being with us and having a uh, 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 participating in this one webinar the 27th edition one sir i think uh, uh, one year is over and uh, one year more than one year thank you for uh, once again sir thank you uh, pradeep ji uh, for you, for, for a, a great presentation thank you so much right, thank you lakshmi thank for you. Uh, you, giving our opportunity uh, for all of us uh, to bring together a webinar out thing every fortnight almost every fortnight we are having yes, one it sir thank you so much thank you thank you so much thank sir thank you, you, everybody. all the participants <laughs> have enjoyed you, the thought provoking discussions and the key takeaways uh, from the from the discussions of this program and uh, thank you so much and stay tuned to the updates of adcock uh, training academy programs thank, thank you. you once again have a good day thank you thank, thank you, you thank you, so thank, you so thank you lakshmi <laughs>